There can be only one. Actually, they could be two, but you know what I mean. Hey guys, the day has come where Shelley 2.5 got itself a worthy opponent, son of Dual R3. But is it really? And I'm sure that you're really excited to leave your opinion in the comments to this video. Before we're gonna start the versus video, I'm just going to tell you that I did review the Shelly 2.5 and the video should be there. And in a couple of seconds that uh, card should change to Son of Dual R3, where you can watch individual features in a separate videos. As for now, the moment that everyone's anticipating Shelly 2.5 versus Son of Dual R3. For a guy with a speech impediment, this is really, really hard to pronounce. And just as before, when I was comparing Shelly 1 to Son of Mini, I'm going to focus on individual features and you'll get to decide what's important to you and pick the best device that suits your need. Let's start with the hardware. Both devices basically perform the same function. They allow you to connect two gangs, two switches and monitor power on two channels, but obviously there are different devices from different companies, so functions will vary a little. And that's what I'm going to investigate. Upon closer inspection, you'll notice that they have very close layout. Both feature seven different terminals, which use pretty much the same wiring to get them connected. It's worth pointing out that both devices also use mains electricity to actuate their wall switches or physical switches, so bear that in mind. If you take a look at the specification, you'll notice the first differences. Shelly 2.5 is older device and runs on ESP8266. It's a well-known chip and, well, it does everything well. Now, Son of Dual R3 is, however, much newer device and inside, to our surprise, we have ESP32. Now they don't really do anything significant with it apart from Bluetooth pairing, but the fact uh, reminds some change, a, a Sonoff has ESP32 inside. Now in terms of powering it up, uh, they pretty much the same when it comes to AC power, but there is an advantage of using Shelly, which uh, you can power it using DC in the range of 24 to 60 volts. Both devices have two relays inside capable of pulling through 10 amps of current. However, Son of Dual R is limited to 15 amps in total, while Shelly 2.5 doesn't have this limitation. In case you want to drive rollers, shutters or motors, uh, Son of Dual has inductive rating of 1 amp and I was not able to find a similar value for Shelly 2.5. Probably want to contact their support, they will tell you a little bit more about it. It's going to be significantly less than 10 amps for sure. There is one thing that Shelly has which Son of Dual R doesn't and there are a couple of development pins that you can use to actually program this or attach external devices. Just read the instructions before you start playing with them. Both obviously come with a pairing button that you can use for different purposes. Another thing that might go in favor of the Shelly is the size, because the Shelly device is much smaller. Having a smaller footprint would help you to fit it behind a wall switch. On the other hand, the Son of Dual Mini comes with a bracket that you can attach to it and mount it on a DIN rail if this is something you want to do. In practice, when wiring both switches, you're going to notice a couple of things. First of all, the size will matter. Even though the shell is smaller, the terminals are quite small and you won't be able to fit more than one wire inside, which means you'll have to use Wago type connectors to split the wire and connect it correctly, which will in turn increase the footprint of the device. You might, however, get away with this in Sonoff, which uh, due to the bigger size and bigger size of the terminals, you should be able to connect two cables inside, which depending on your circumstances, might not require additional connectors to get you connected. I also mentioned the difference in a total current rating for both devices with Shelly being a bit better. However, in the UK, I won't be able to take advantage of it because our sockets are limited to 16 amps uh, fuses, which means I'll be capped anyway and those devices will perform in a similar manner. And I know what you're thinking, the bigger value is better, right? 
but they're made for lights and uh, unless you're trying to drive floodlights on a football pitch you're probably gonna be okay with either. The hardware differences, while apparent, they weren't really significant to how you boot the device, so let's focus on the software because there's going to be a couple of interesting... Shelly Cloud and EWILink app offer similar standard functionality. On both you obviously find a cloud access so you can toggle your devices from remote location. Apart from timers and schedules, you'll also find integrations with Smart Assistant, so you can use Google Home or Amazon Alexa to toggle your devices. Both apps also offer power on behavior, so you'll be able to decide how the device behaves when it loses power. Let's start with physical switching. Both devices are very responsive and the corresponding apps reflect the changes made from a physical switch very quickly in under half a second which is more than acceptable. Now Son of Dual R has three switching modes. There is a toggle, pulse and edge, which is going to probably cover 90% of the entire planet needs, unless you've got a more tricky scenario. Shelly 2.5, however, comes with more different modes for more custom behaviors. There is a momentary toggle, edge, detached and activation switch, which can also be reversed. That enables you greater flexibility. So for your regular needs, both devices are going to do just fine. But if you are looking for that extra flexibility to address your individual automation needs, you probably want to stick with Shelly 2.5. I've mentioned that both devices support power metering, which is great because you can measure how much electricity your devices are using. This functionality is built in, so all you have to do is just stick them in a wall and start metering power consumption per each channel, which is awesome. In my tests, both devices were reporting power consumption correctly, but Son of Dual R3 provided you with a little bit more data. Apart from the current and total watts consumed that are available on Shelly 2.5, Son of Dual 3 was providing you with additional information like real, apparent and reactive power. There was also information about the voltage, and ability to start and end metering at any given point. But Shelly 2.5 isn't far behind with exciting features. One of my favorite things is the ability to actually give you an estimate consumption of entire room based on Shelly devices inside. That's a really cool feature and I really wish other ecosystems would adopt it. It's worth mentioning that you can actually disable this and if you don't want the device doesn't have to contribute to the, towards the total room consumption. So while personally I really like this feature for power metering, I have to give it to Sono Dual R because it delivers a little bit more metrics which you can find really useful. And next up it's something that probably gonna interest you the most which is DIY automation. And I might as well chuck this into a bin because in the current conditions it doesn't really offer anything. It doesn't have a son of DIY mode and unless you flush it, which I did in this video and flushed a smot on it, you're not going to be able to take advantage of anything extra outside of eWilling. Shelly 2.5 however takes it to a next level. I really like what they do with their software. They enable REST API by default without removing the device from the cloud, which means you can interact with the REST API and have the device present in their Shelly app. On top of that, each time there is a state in a device status, it has the ability to issue URL requests or post requests to a different server, integrating the change directly with, for example, Home Assistant or Node-RED or other services. It's a very useful feature and I would strongly recommend you, you uh, try it out and see what else you can do. If you really want to get fancy, you don't even have to connect the Shelly 2.5 to a Shelly cloud. It hosts a web server which you can log into and access all the features that a Shelly cloud app has to offer. There is also MQTT protocol which you can take advantage of, however please bear in mind that enabling that will disable Shelly 2.5 from cloud and remove support for home assistance as well, so you'll have to reproduce that yourself. So when it comes to using this in DIY automation, Shelly 2.5 is a clear winner. So when it comes to DIY automation, Shelly 2.5 is a clear winner. I guess the only redeeming qualities is ability to tasmatize a son of 
Dual R3 and take advantage of the ESP32 inside. Now, while this is all in beta and you can't really do much more than just the standard functions offered by this anyway, maybe in the future you'll be able to take advantage of the Bluetooth and enable that uh, Bluetooth mesh to enable location inside using Home Assistant. If that's something you are interested, you might be tempted to start investing in Sonoff Dual R3. Let's talk about price. Sonoff has been known for offering the devices at very affordable prices, and in fact Sonoff Dual R3 is available for less than $14, or you can get it even cheaper on promotion. Shelly 2.5 is a little bit more expensive, coming to about $24 in total, which is almost twice as much. If you're only going to buy one device, the difference might not be so stark, but if you're going to automate a couple of rooms, that difference quickly adds up. It's down to you what matters more, the convenience of using Shelly Cloud and ability to use DIY automation off the shelf, or maybe you're gonna spend a little bit of time flashing these and putting Tasmota on it to enable DIY automation. Whatever you're gonna do, the choice is obviously yours. I'm going to link both of them in the description of this video if you want to get them, and using these links will definitely support me and my channel. Right guys, let me know in the comments if I missed something that is important and you think that one device has a clear edge over another. I've stated my piece and you know what I think about two devices, so I'll be really interested to hear your story. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video, you know how it works and how to subscribe and do all that stuff, I'm not going to explain this. But what I would do is strongly recommend you to follow me on one of uh, my social media channels so you get access to a unique work in progress content and all the random stuff that I'm sharing in between posting new content. You're also gonna get a notification whenever there is a new content posted by me. And that's, well, exciting, right? All right, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video, definitely. Bye. The only redeeming quality of a son of... Ah!